So look, I know Noah already talked about the report on the Southern Baptist Convention sex abuse cover-up, but there's a lot more to be said on the issue. Because while a lot of it was certainly about image control and litigation avoidance, I'd say old-fashioned misogyny played a larger role than either of those things. The heart of the issue, if you read the report, seems to be the assumption that women reporting the abuse were lying, willing, or somehow deserved it. That's the only way to reconcile the demonic response that they got from SBC's leadership. So to be clear, unlike the familiar reports we've seen out of the Catholic Church, this one isn't primarily about pedophilia. Again, that may well be because the SBC just didn't provide pedophilia information to the investigators. So let's not take that as some indication of innocence, all right? But what we have in this 300-page report is a compendium of raped, assaulted, and abused women coming forward again and again and being not just ignored, but demonized. When victims banded together to try to push through their official stonewalling, they were literally accused of being instruments of Satan. And yeah, they were trying to do damage control, sure, but do any of us honestly believe that men complaining about sexual abuse by priests would have been treated the same way? Take the example of Krista Brown, a victim who addressed the SBC's bylaw work group. According to the report, some members of the executive committee opposed allowing her to speak at all. And when she did, one member, quote, turned his back to her during her speech and another chortled, end quote. It also talks about the same group referring to victims as Potiphar's wife, a character in the Bible who makes false rape accusations. Or how about this quote from the SBC's then president, Frank Page, who wrote back in 2007, quote, please be aware that there are groups that are nothing more than opportunistic persons who are seeking to raise opportunities for personal gain, end quote. And here's the fucked up thing. If they were just saying that shit as an excuse to ignore or equivocate, it would actually be better. But I think they honestly believe it. I think Christian leaders are so inherently misogynistic that they can't help but assume that the woman is somehow guilty whenever she accuses a man of anything whatsoever. Hell, in many ways, their Bible demands it. And in every way, the dominant culture of Protestants demand it. In fact, let me follow that up with an example that doesn't come from the SBC's report. Instead, this comes to us from last Sunday at the New Life Christian Church in Warsaw, Indiana. A pastor by the name of John B. Lowe, yes, that's his real name, confessed to his congregation that he'd engaged in the terrible sin of adultery 20 years earlier. But after his confession, the woman on the other end of that so-called adultery took the stage. And it turns out that adultery was a damn kind way of putting it because she was 16 years old at the time. Now, the whole thing is on video and it's some very powerful shit. The victim here was as brave as hell in her denunciation of Lowe. I'll link to it online, but first let me spoil the tragic ending. After the congregation heard a pastor admit to adultery and a woman explained that we call that form of adultery statutory rape, the congregation very clearly chose the pastor even after he admitted that she was indeed 16 at the time. The problem isn't this leader or that policy. The problem is a culture of misogyny that traces its roots back 2,000 years and then some. As always, the problem is religion. Speaking of which, that's my cue to hand things back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli. Eli. 